Okay, so this is an attempt at demonstrating the visual bloom filter on a Raspberry Pi using some LEDs connected to a Pimeroni Unicorn hat, uh, which is an off-the-shelf product that you can buy and just plug into your Pi and it has a Python library. So I've got the front end for the bloom filter here that's running on the Pi. Um, the Pi that you can see is not connected to the laptop at all. The cable coming out of it is the power cable. It's connected to the same network over Wi-Fi and you see it has an IP address on my network up here. So this is its front end, it's running in uh, Bulma with just vanilla JavaScript, and we can do a few things here. We can reset the filter, we can check if something adds it, uh, we can add something to it, or check if something exists in it. Um, and obviously being a probabilistic data structure, it's not gonna tell us yes or no, it's gonna tell us maybe it exists or no, it doesn't. So to start off with, I'll reset the filter. You can see the, uh, the LEDs flash blue there to show that we've reset it. And I'm gonna put some names in. So I'm gonna put in Simon, and you can see over there in the terminal in the left, that's the Pi, that Simon triggered LEDs 38, 35, and 44, and that those flash green and are now red, showing that those bits are set. So we have three hash functions in this Bloom filter, that's why there's three results there. So add some more names, we'll add Kathy. Again, you can see three different LEDs flash and then become set, and now we've got six set in total. Go ahead and add a Mohit. Again, three. And now we'll add Georgina. And what's happened with Georgina there is one of the uh, hashes resolved to an LED position that we'd already used. So only two fresh LEDs are lit now, rather than three. So moving on from that, we'll add Sue's here. Three new LEDs. And we'll add Cheryl. Three new LEDs, and we'll add Itamar, same thing. Now we're gonna add Kevin, and in Kevin's case, we'll see that only two LEDs uh, changed, but not because there was necessarily a clash with an existing one, but because Kevin hashed to 19 on two of the hash functions. So let's add some more names, we'll add Robin, And we'll add Charlene. And we'll add one more. We'll add Kavita. So now we have all of those names in our filter. As you can see, we got quite a few red LEDs there, so positions occupied in it. Um, let's see if we can find some names in the filter. So here's one we didn't add. So Rowena, does Rowena exist? You'll see it's flashing blue. Uh, the first bit it hashed to wasn't set, so it doesn't need to go any further. We know Rowena is not in the Bloom filter. So let's try Carly. Does Carly exist? Same deal, first bit we tested, nothing. Um, so it doesn't exist. Let's try one that does exist. So we definitely added Cheryl. As we can see, it's going through the first, the second, and the third bits, and it's finding that all of them existed. So um, Cheryl may be in the Bloom filter. We can't say for sure because it's probabilistic data structure. We're not actually storing these values. We're just storing hashes of them. So let's try another one, Simon. Simon was the first name we added, I think. So again, one, two, three, it's checked all three. It's happy with that. I may be in the Bloom filter. Um, so. Sometimes the problems with these things is there's trade-offs. So we're saving a lot of storage by doing this um, versus say using a set or some other structure where we'd store all the data. But sometimes we'll get false positives. So if we try Antonia here, uh, Antonia was not a name that we added. So Antonia, she's not in the Bloom filter. So let's try this and we get one, two, three occupied positions and now the uh, the response is Antonia may be in the Bloom filter, and unfortunately that's a lie because we didn't add Antonia to the Bloom filter, but that's the nature of these data structures. So hopefully that was a fun way of looking at this. Um, I've put the code on GitHub and we'll embed this video in some sort of write-up. Thanks very much.